Hello and welcome to yet another Grumpy's Rehab Facility video. Today we're going to be talking about crafting and why I think that what Star Citizen is going to get in 318 should not be considered crafting. So let me roll the intro and let's talk about it. Hello, my name is Grumpy. Before I start talking about crafting in Star Citizen, I want to tell you what crafting looks like in other games, and how it evolved throughout the years. Crafting in games is almost as old as video games are. One of the first games that I found that had crafting as a gameplay mechanic was King's Quest from 1983. So it is by no means a new gameplay mechanic, it just got refined over the years. But it seems that it somehow got stuck in the late 90s and early 2000s because it didn't really change much at all. Let me explain. Most games nowadays have some kind of a variation of crafting mechanics. Some games like Minecraft or Space Engineers, for example, rely solely on crafting, since that's the main part of the experience. Some other games like in the latest Tomb Raider, you can craft items on the fly, for example arrows to replenish your ammo. It is done with a single keybind and it is there to make the player work a bit more and to make the gameplay experience a bit harder harder or in-depth. But on the other hand, for example, in Minecraft, you really do need to know your recipes for crafting certain items. Not only that it gives more depth to crafting itself, but it also makes a certain connection between the player and the crafted item. But in most today's games, crafting is basically just a reskin of the in-game shop. If your inventory has enough materials that you need for crafting, you just click on the item itself and you'll craft it. And since most video games today are on the rails, you will will most certainly have most of those materials placed in some convenient spots so the game itself would be sure that you pick them up for later. And then in some games, just to make it more complex, you have an arbitrary skill tree that you need to go through just to unlock the perks needed for crafting the item that you want, only to go through the same procedure again and again. But what that is, is basically just menu diving, and it takes the player away from the core gameplay experience. While some downtime could be good for your experience to chill out and lower your adrenaline level after hours of fighting NPCs or whatever you're doing, if it is used too much, it can slow the game down, and it can become just one of those tedious things that you need to do to progress. My main example for this would be Watch Dogs 2, a game that doesn't even need any materials to craft at all, you unlock the craftable items with the skill tree and that's it. You get a perk that's needed to unlock the item you want, you go to the crafting machine that's located in your home base, you click on the item and you instantly get it. It is basically a boring step that you need to take to get the item that you need to progress. Now in most games, crafting is split into crafting permanent and consumable items and upgrading your existing items. Consumables will be ammo, health potions, mana potions, etc. And on the other hand, permanent items are mostly items that you'll be using such as armor, weapons, tools and stuff like that. And in the end, some games give you an opportunity to upgrade your items to a level that you can't get anywhere else. Those three mechanics are most typical for all the games out there. But in the case of RPG games, in most of them you will be upgrading your items or you will simply be crafting an upgraded item that can't be found anywhere in the game. In that case, the crafted item will cost more than the same item that can be found in the stores. And it will either take more time to gather all the materials and pieces that you need to craft it, or it will simply be something that is unobtainable in the shops. And in the end, they will make the item have more weight to it, because it will build a bond between the player and the item, as it will be more personalized, especially if the game lets the player change the stats of the item to his liking. The player would now grow an attachment to that item, purely because of that endorphin hit that he got when he finally crafted it. And it will be a rare item, and you will be happy that it's yours. And in other games, of course, you get upgraded and rare items by doing quests and looting the bodies of bosses that you killed. And that whole mechanic didn't really change since the 90s. Some games had a different approach to the mechanic, but the end result was still the same. Now that you know how crafting works in other games, now we can talk about Star Citizen. And yes, I had to make this whole segment of the video because I swear to God, I think, I feel like most of you never played any other games, especially not like RPG games or, or games with like crafting and uh, uh, engineering, etc. So you get already excited about things that are not really crafting. 
but let's talk about Star Citizen. Now, as I've said, crafting needs to make you feel like you're making something new and personalized for it to provide you with a dopamine hit. If not, it will just be a tedious task of menu diving after getting your stats to a point where you can craft certain items. And honestly, Star Citizen does that perfectly, because it doesn't take you away from the game into a menu that you're gonna visit often just to craft items for you. It is still basically a menu system, but it is done in the game's environment, and that's really cool. But is it really crafting though? If we take the Star Citizen's new crafting mechanic as an example and you want to make a multi-tool, it would have to be either personalized or better than the ones that you can buy in the in-game store for it to serve a purpose. Instead, the multi-tool that we craft in 318 is the same as any other that can be found in the game. And you could say that that's okay, but if you check the price of the multi-tool around the verse and you compare it to the multi-tool that you're crafting, you can see that it costs much more than the one in the store. The cheapest multi-tool can be bought in Area 18 for 418 Alpha UAC. The next best price is in Lord for 452 Alpha UEC and the rest of the landing zones will sell it for 485 Alpha UEC. Now if we want to craft a multi-tool in our reclaimers or vultures, you would need to spend 90% of your 1SU box of salvage material or RMC. Now the selling price of that same 1SU box is 7.7 thousand Alpha UEC, which means that this multi-tool will basically cost you 6,930 Alpha UEC which is 1400% more than you would spend if you bought it in the store. The same goes for the attachments, they have a cost of 20% of the 1SU box. The prices are much higher than if you bought them in the store. And those multi-tools and those attachments are not in any way personalized or customizable. They're just like the, the same ones that you can loot or that you can buy in any other store. And I gotta thank Ray's Guide for, for this because he discovered the prices and he just did the math and go watch his video, it's gonna be linked uh, up here. Uh, it's a really good video and there's an exploit there that, that, that that's probably the only thing that's gonna be fixed before 318 drops into the PU. Now, this all could be a mistake on CAG's part, but it also can be something that they thought would be cool because it's more convenient for you to make a tool in your ship than to go to a station and buy one. But crafting isn't supposed to be that. Crafting in RPG games is supposed to make you explore until you find all the materials that you need to make that item that you want. And then, once you craft that item, it will be a one-of-a-kind thing, and Star Citizen does not let you do this. Now, even if it gets fixed before the patch goes live and the prices match the ones in the shops, I myself would still not consider this to be a crafting because of a few reasons. The first reason would be, and I already stated this, is that you're crafting an item that can be found literally everywhere in the game. It is also one of the most common items that you can loot from loot boxes. Therefore, the price of creating that multi-tool does not match the rareness of the same item in the verse. The second reason would be that you can only craft that one multi-tool and its attachments and nothing else. You can say that this is just a tier zero of crafting and you will be right, but is it a good implementation of tier zero mechanic. It simply isn't. And is it even needed right now? Well, it is, but more on that a bit later. The third box that is left unchecked in this Star Citizen's new mechanic is that it doesn't allow you to upgrade your item at all. The fourth unchecked box is that there is no sense of progression like in other games, since you don't need to unlock any skills to craft an item. And the last point is that you don't need to explore to get the materials that you need to combine so you can craft that item. So I wouldn't even call this an addition of crafting to the game. Yes, you can click on a button and yes, you get an item, but it is by no means an addition of actual crafting mechanics to the game. This is basically a portable shop that is ripping you off. And I would say, I would go that far to say that this is just a solution to a problem that CG made themselves. And let me tell you why. Back in my day, the first conveyor belt was made in 1892. And now, in 2023, we have all sorts of different machines in our disposal to sort out our stuff. And it is all done either by hand or with pre-programmed machines that make our lives easier. From robotic hand machines all the way to sorting machines. Almost everything is automated. And since Star Citizen takes place in 2952, I could only assume that in the future we lost a lot of things that we had available to us in these modern times. But it seems that 
that even if we got cloning and amazing spaceships, we only lost the things that make our lives easier. Or in other words, the Steer-1 implementation of crafting was made to solve a design problem that the developers made themselves. Instead of giving us automized robotic arms or a longer conveyor belt, they made us use our multi-tools. So basically, CAG spent half of a decade making a salvage mechanic that ended up being so basic that it needed something more to give it some depth. So they designed the dispenser that needed to be emptied by hand. Jesus Christos, what were they thinking? But then the people raged on the forums, because they didn't understand why would they buy a $150 ship that needed additional tools for it to work. So the developers found a quick fix to the problem that they made themselves. And then the content creators started making catchy thumbnails on how Star Citizen is getting crafting mechanics. So what this crafting basically is, is just a workaround around the poor game design with a dispenser that you need to like empty every now and then. It is just basically poor game design. So instead of giving hull scraping itself some depth, they try to introduce yet another time sink just for it to seem like it's a complex game loop. But if you compare hull scraping to mining, for example, you can see exactly what the current implementation of salvage is missing missing, some kind of skill-based gameplay. And you can say that they did it to encourage multi-crewing, but that doesn't change the fact that it's just bad game design, because the Reclaimer gameplay is no better. You need to have a guy sitting in the back of the ship, falling around the place because of the g-forces, and then sorting the boxes out every two minutes. And since even a monkey can do that, it is not engaging unless you're a pineapple or maybe avocado or whatever, but it is not engaging gameplay. But there is a solution to it and it's pretty simple. Honestly, my solution would be to make the beams wider so they would cover a wider area, but then add Add a mini game to it to keep the beams at the optimal heat level so you can get more materials out of the area. And then instead of having to craft a multi tool with a tractor beam attachment, we can have a longer conveyor belt so that the dispenser can make up to five or six boxes without us needing to go back there and sort them out. And since having an automized sorting machine in the back of the ships is too hard to code for it to work as intended 100% of the time, give the players a tractor beam inside the ship itself that the crew can operate remotely, just like a remote turret. And there you go, fixed! Now you can focus on making crafting in the next decade, I guess, uh, because you're gonna focus on Squad of 42. Anyway, thank you for watching, and thank you to all my patrons that are supporting my channel. I know that I wasn't really uploading or uh, I wasn't going live, I'm, I, was, I was not live streaming in, the, in a couple of days or maybe in a week, uh, but I'm gonna make it up to you, I, I, I promise. I am, uh, but thank you for supporting me. If you want to support me, the Patreon link is down in the description of the video. You can also support me by super chatting or uh, hitting the join button on YouTube, uh, whatever floats your boat. Also, there is uh, this, uh, Keep Calm and Buy an Idris. That is my merch and you can check out the merch store also down in the description of the video. Uh, th like there's a lot, you can see them on the screen, there's a lot of uh, funny things and funny prints. I, I added some new prints so you can check them out. If you like them, you can buy them. Uh, they're not dirt cheap, but they are high quality and you're gonna wear them forever basically. Uh, and yeah, so thank you for watching. And uh, one more thing, I added like an affiliate link. So if you want to check out uh, the, the things that I'm using for like video and audio and etc you can check it out I mean I wouldn't recommend you buying it if you don't need it so but if you want to you have the affiliate link but yeah check it out anyway thank you for watching again and don't forget to bring it down when you're trying to space and mwah, bye